Okay, so I picked up the Alfred Hitchcock box set uh, that's been released all around the world recently. It just came out in New Zealand uh, yesterday. So I uh, picked it up and it has a few differences from the uh, British and American set structurally wise, uh, which we'll get into. And we'll just have a brief rundown of uh, the quality of all the films. I could spend uh, five or six videos just talking about these films, but I'm going to try and keep it down to one or two. Okay, firstly, here's, this is what the set looks like. It comes in a bigger box than the... Uh, you can see it's quite wide. Names of the films here. Uh, bigger box than the sets overseas. And we have some information on the back. And it opens up like this. Now, there was a lot of people who complained about the way the discs were housed in the American and British sets. It was kind of an accordion book uh, that uh, just kind of uh, sprung open and you, it had a, um, a disc in each envelope. Uh, this one has gone quite differently. The complaints on that set was that uh, they didn't seem housed very strongly and it seemed quite fragile. So um, this one is quite different, but I think I'd have preferred the American and British uh, housing because this is a particular type of uh, box set structure I've seen before and I'm not a fan of. It is the big long train effect of opening up two discs at a time, you know, like, like so on. It's very hard to use, very hard to sort of thumb through stuff. It's also harder to look at the uh, the poster artwork, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, and all of the a lot of the artwork is here on the back, which is hard to look at because of the way it's structured with the discs on the inside, and with it being so long, it's hard to look at any one particular piece of art. Um, it's just it's really unruly. the The old Alien quadrilogy uh, DVD box set had the same structure and I didn't like it at all. Anyway, we'll get into the films because that's what we really want to know about. So we'll start at the beginning as this Universal box set is in chronological order. We have Saboteur and Shadow of a Doubt from 1942 and 1943. As you can see the discs are uh, layered one sort of above and below each other in these little slots which can cause damage if you're not careful but they are quite well separated by the plastic structure. Now in behind you can see we have the posters. Um, in this overseas sets uh, you were pulling the disc out of a poster-like envelope and it was quite a bit easier to sort of navigate between looking at the the artwork and pulling out the disc. This is you have to pull out both discs to really to have a good look at uh, the artwork for each one. But um, here we have a nice poster of a saboteur and shadow of a doubt. I have posters for both of these framed in the house, um, but different ones, different posters from these, um, and it just tells you a little bit about uh, what special features on. For the most part, they're the same special features as the DVD edition, but I'll tell you where that varies. Uh, the structure of this is the same for all the films. You pull out both discs and you see posters and the special features behind and uh, also the same for all the discs. They all have pretty good quality sound. So I'm just going to focus on uh, the film's uh, picture and I will tell you where there's some high-def exclusives as we go along. Now Saboteur um, looks excellent. A lot of black and white films, if they're treated well, look really, really good. Um, now Saboteur is an interesting film. It's kind of that classic Hitchcock formula where it's a wrongly accused man on the run trying to prove his innocence. Um, this one really feels like a dry run for North by Northwest which is superior uh, later on. I should mention that North by Northwest is not in this set. It's North by Northwest is the 15th film in the American set um, whereas the sets from everywhere else in the world just have the 14 films. Um, I have North by Northwest on Blu-ray anyway. I, I had Psycho on Blu-ray as well, but I'm going to have to sell that now that I have this set. So Saboteur looks excellent, excellent depth, good clarity, good contrast levels, really nice inky blacks. Surprisingly excellent film considering it's looking film considering it's the oldest one in here, and is probably one of the best looking films in the set. 
Shadow of a Doubt um, has a little more noise and flex than Saboteur has and is a little bit softer looking, but it was probably filmed that way. Uh, you can't improve on really on what something that's filmed without really uh, messing with some trickery, which is not beneficial to the film. So it's probably a good representation of the way Shadow of the Doubt is supposed to look. Shadow of a Doubt, I should mention, at one stage was Alfred Hitchcock's favourite film of his own. Uh, he had said in an interview, I don't know if that was uh, his final thoughts before he departed, but I mean, it is a really fine film. Joseph Cotton is quite menacing. Uh, both pretty solid releases, being the earliest ones. Uh, the oldest films on here, yet s some of the better-looking films in the group. The next two discs up are from 1948 and 1954. Rope and Rear Window, which are two sort of big brand name titles for Hitchcock. Um, Rope being his first colour film. has that kind of old, early colour film, washed out kind of look. Um, and uh, But the, the transfer, is, I think, is pretty well representative of um, of what of what it should look like. I've had a lot of complaints before I got this that it was quite flickery and, and drab, but I, I was I haven't watched it all the way through. I just flicked through to see if I could uh, throw out the different parts of the film to see you know get a good feeling of the uh, visual representation, and I thought it was excellent uh, for you know for the age of the film and for the uh, technical limitations of when it was filmed. Now, Rear Window, one of uh, Hitch's most famous uh, films, has some exclusive uh, features. It has a new documentary, Rear Window Ethics, an original documentary. Also, Pure Cinema, Through the Eyes of the Master, Breaking Bar Barriers, The Sound of Hitchcock. And that's along with the um, regular special features that were already released on the previous DVD special edition. Now, Rear Window, it's got... It's really nice, bright, colourful. It's a little grainier than I thought it might be for a film from its time, I, but um, you know, it's but it's a it's a pleasing enough grain. It's just a little bit more than I was thinking. I don't mind grain. Um, it's supposed to be there, but um, I was actually expecting it to be a little uh, little crisper, like some of the other films in here that I will talk about. But it's got good detail. Um, some shots look like they were from a different uh, master reel than others, uh, sort of. But for the most part. Uh, I think it's one of the better ones in here. It's certainly one of the better colour ones. Um, I was pretty pleased with uh, the way that turned out. Now we have The Man Who Knew Too Much and The Trouble with Harry. Now, Trouble with Harry I haven't seen in a long time prior to popping this in to see how it looked. And I was never a big fan of the film, but I'm keen to give it a rewatch. I don't think I saw it originally under optimal conditions. But however, the transfer looks pretty fantastic. There is a little bit of um, debris and noise which hasn't been cleaned up, but for the most part the colours are very strong. Um, it's probably one of the better uh, transfers in here. Um, definitely one of the better transfers of his uh, lesser-known films. And if you're a fan with that, of Trouble with Harry in the first place, you're going to be very pleased with the presentation. Uh, the Man Who Knew Too Much is a film... I really can't stand. I don't like it at all. It's one of, one of my least favorite Hitchcock films, and certainly my least favorite of anything in this set. Um, and the transfer is a bit of a mess. It's all over the place. Quite flickery. Um, looks like they used a lot of different um, master reels to uh, to pick shots from. Um, I think if you were a big fan of that film, you'd be a little disappointed with the transfer. That said, it there is worse transfers in the set. Um, so. Stay tuned for that.